I'm not a gas engine, and the F-150 Lightning is not your average pickup truck. You could forgive Ford had they taken the easy route when they electrified the F-150. After all, this is America's best-selling truck, has been for over 45 years. They could have just pushed out the gas engine, dropped in a couple of electric motors, given it a big battery, and off you go. They'd have sold plenty. But what they did instead was make this, the 2022 F-150 Lightning, and they took it back to basics. Only basics according to just what you can do when you get rid of internal combustion altogether and go all electric. And so you end up with a vehicle that promises not only to be good on the road, but to be good when it's parked up, whether it's at a work site or a campsite or just plugged in at home. It's a huge gamble. And the interesting thing is, that gamble's paid off. Unlike other electric trucks we've seen, Ford isn't kicking off with the most expensive configurations and promising cheaper versions later on. Instead, the F-150 Lightning arrives in everything from a $40,000 Pro configuration through to a near six-figure platinum trim. That's before the $7,500 federal tax incentive for EVs, though it's worth remembering that Ford is pretty close to the point where that credit starts to taper off and eventually disappear altogether. Still, for the moment it means the F-150 Lightning could potentially be as little as $32,500 before destination fees and any further state or local incentives. That gets you the standard battery, rated for 230 miles of range on the EPA's test cycle. The extended battery is rated for 300 to 320 miles, depending on trim. Dual motor all-wheel drive is standard, as is 150 kilowatt DC fast charging support. Figure on around 54 miles of range after 10 minutes plugged in. With the standard battery, there's 452 horsepower, or 580 horsepower with the extended battery. Either way, there's 775 foot-pound of torque. Compared to some of the ostentatious electric trucks we've seen, and yes, Cybertruck, I'm talking about you, the Lightning is positively restrained. That's absolutely intentional too, and it's not just to avoid deterring any of the more traditional F-150 customers. The smoother, more aerodynamic body doesn't lose any of the instant recognition. You're not going to mistake this for anything other than an F-150. More importantly, it means broad cross-compatibility with existing accessories. The bed is the same size and shape, for instance, which means if you already have a cover or tool chest, it should slot right onto the Lightning. That's a particularly big deal for companies wanting to mix gas and electric trucks in their fleet. What Ford hasn't done, though, is allow that backward support to stop it from taking full advantage of the flexibility electrification brings. Talk to the Ford engineers and they'll tell you the hardest part of developing the Lightning was this, the frunk. And that seems strange at first because, honestly, most EVs have a frunk or some sort of storage compartment underneath the hood because there's no gas engine. Most of the time, though, it's relatively compact. You can store maybe the spare charging cable and possibly a puncture repair kit. Ford, however, has managed to fit in a full 400 litres of space. It's waterproof, it has a drain hole at the bottom so you could fill it with ice, put cold drinks in it for a tailgate party and then drain it out and rinse it off with a hose pipe. It has multiple outlets so that with 2.4 kilowatts of power you can plug in anything from your laptop, a, a TV, a Traeger grill, even like a mobility scooter which you could slot in. This space will fit two golf bags. Basically, to make it, Ford had to not just move the engine, but move everything else, because there's actually quite a lot that lives under the hood of your average internal combustion vehicle. And all of that had to find a different space somewhere else on the Lightning, just so you could get this. And honestly, I think it was worth it. Everything I already love about EVs is fully evident behind the wheel of the Lightning. The instantaneous torque means it's deceptively fast from a standing start, and there's never a shortage of overtaking power. 0-60 arrives in the mid 4 seconds for the extended battery, but it's not like the 5 second time for the standard version is exactly slow. Now I'm not going to tell you that this is some sort of electric sports car. Sure, it has the most torque of any F-150, and Ford's done a lot of work keeping the centre of gravity low, introducing a new rear suspension system, and adding quite an effective sport mode for straight line speed. At the end of the day though, this is still a full-size truck with the weight of a full-size truck to match, and when you hit the corners, you definitely feel that in terms of body roll. Blue Cruise, Ford's hands-free driving assistance tech, is available, and it's definitely worth considering if you do a lot of highway driving. Twin cameras watch to make sure you're paying attention, even as the F-150 handles speed and lane keeping on stretches of divided highway that Ford calls Blue Zones. Now I like Blue Cruise, though it's definitely still a work in progress. It's fairly conservative and will throw the responsibility back to you in some sharper corners, for example. Ford can at least update it later on with over-the-air improvements, but it's worth remembering that, like all systems of its type, this is not autonomous or self-driving, and you're always responsible, even if your hands aren't physically on the wheel. 
Off-road, meanwhile, there's a big slab of underbody protection for the battery and a dedicated drive mode with an e-locking rear differential. That physically locks the rear wheels together in contrast to the Lightning's usual brake-based torque vectoring. Now, I'm a big fan of EVs for off-roading, where the more precise control of electric motors can make tackling tricky terrain more straightforward. The Lightning's no different there, even if it doesn't have the huge array of cameras covering every possible angle that the Hummer EV provides. There's definitely enough potential here that muddy work sites and gravel roads needn't be a problem. The same goes for towing, where there's support for up to £10,000 with the optional tow kit. That also gets you a second cooler, helping avoid overheating even if you've got a big horse box or trailer hanging off the back. From behind the wheel, there's a real combination of the familiar and the new, and you get the feeling that Ford has tried its level best not to too upset the opinions of its long-standing F-150 fans. And so that means that while I have a big touchscreen that I can use to control all of my vehicle settings and have a huge map display and get access to all of my streaming media, I also have lots of physical controls too, and they're not tiny little buttons, they're big chunky ones that I could control if I was wearing work gloves. If you've been in a gas F-150 recently, the Lightning's cabin shouldn't come as much of a surprise. The more affordable models put the focus on durability, and while the Lariat and Platinum trims get fancier, there's still a fair amount of plastic around. Truck buyers don't seem to mind that though, and thoughtful features like the fold-out work desk help take full advantage of the space on offer. Better still, Ford's massage seats no longer feel and sound like a traction engine trying to juggle you, they're quieter and much more refined. Full-size trucks have become increasingly refined over the years, but the Lightning does seem to take that to another level. And you really get a good idea of that when you turn off the artificial propulsion sound, and that's the kind of spaceship-like noise that Ford pipes into the cabin so that you can be sure that the drivetrain is doing something. And they give you a toggle to turn that off in the settings, and then you really get an idea of just how hushed this cabin is. Depending on trim, you either get a 12-inch landscape touchscreen or a 15-inch portrait one. At launch, they're running Sync 4, which can take a little getting used to with its mixture of persistent controls, configurable cards, and multi-page menus. There's a lot going on here, and I can't help but wish Ford had thrown in a few programmable buttons to make summoning your most used features a one-tap shortcut away. The real smarts are in how Sync 4 works with the rest of the Lightning and Ford's cloud to better calculate range. It's fair to say range anxiety still ranks as one of the most off-putting parts of EV ownership, and making sure the number on the dashboard is as accurate as possible is something every automaker is trying to nail. Ford does it by combining your own historic driving style with the wisdom of the crowd, based on the route you set in the navigation system. It can compare anonymized data from other EV owners to better predict how the Lightning's battery will hold up, even on routes you've never taken before. If you get the onboard scales option, which shows exactly how much load is in the bed or on the tow hitch, Ford Intelligent Range will take that into account too. If there's not enough charge for the trip you've planned, it'll suggest when and where to plug in along the way, and how long you should be there for. What you won't find is a Ford-branded public charging station. The automakers partner with third-party networks like Electrify America instead, with over 70,000 chargers under the Blue Oval Charging Network. The upside is a single way to initiate and pay for charging when you're on the move, though it still means the experience of F-150 Lightning drivers at those charges is dependent on the upkeep of the individual networks. As we've seen all too frequently, that experience can be undermined by slow or just plain broken stations. Honestly, what excites me about the F-150 Lightning isn't so much the fact that it's a great electric truck, though it is shaping up to be a great electric truck. It's the way that Ford has kind of thought outside of what you do with your electric vehicle, or your vehicle generally. The fact that most of the time it's parked up, and in the case of an EV, usually parked up and plugged in charging. And things like being able to power a worksite or a campsite or power a whole home in the case of an outage, I think are going to be features that once people live with, they're not going to want to go back to a gas vehicle that doesn't have them. Tempting as it is to take full advantage of all that horsepower and torque, the F-150 Lightning's battery is arguably just as useful when the truck's parked up. Depending on trim, there are as many as 11 outlets spread around the cabin, bed and frunk, and that includes 120 volt, 240 volt, and USB, with up to 9.6 kilowatts to play with depending on package. It's enough to run the tools for a worksite, a killer tailgate party, or a hotel quality campground, without having to worry about the noise or fumes from a gas generator. Cough up the roughly $4,000 for the intelligent backup power system meanwhile, and with the right wall charger, the F-150 Lightning can instantly start supplying power to your home in the case of an outage. Ford says it can run the average home for three days, or up to ten if you're more frugal, with options in the app to control just how much juice is kept in reserve for actual driving. Later on, software updates will allow the home to automatically switch between grid and lightning power, depending on how expensive electricity rates are. That's something no gas or diesel truck can do. Though the EV market isn't exactly new anymore, Ford's electric truck arguably makes the biggest splash. Rivian's R1T is on sale, but production numbers are still very low, and it's more expensive than many of the F-150 Lightning configurations. Ford, which is actually a Rivian investor, also sees the target audience as being pretty different too, and I don't disagree. 
The same has to go for the GMC Hummer EV, both in short supply and, for the moment, exceedingly expensive. Tesla's Cybertruck, Chevy's Silverado EV and Ram's 1500 EV are all potential competitors, but none are in production yet. That gives Ford a decent window of opportunity. Actually taking advantage of that window will arguably be Ford's greatest challenge. With 200,000 or more reservations under its belt, demand for the Lightning far exceeds the production capacity. Having wet the market appetite for a legitimate electric F-150, the irony is that it could take two years or more before Ford can actually come close to stating that initial demand. What really stands out with the F-150 Lightning is Ford's ambition, or Ford's breadth of ambition. The Lightning isn't a small-scale production affair like Rivian's R1T still is. It's not only being sold in a super high-end six-figure configuration like the GMC Hummer EV, and unlike Chevy and Ram's electric pickups, it's being built right now rather than some years in the future. And also, it's not just being sold to fleets, it's being sold to consumers too, and it's being sold in a $40,000 version and all the way up to the $96,000 platinum trim you see here. That's a huge undertaking, and to do it, Fords have to ramp up production twice, to the point that they're talking about eventually, at some point next year, being able to build 150,000 or so of these every year. For all that it's gone the whole hog on the F-150 Lightning, though, Ford is still being rational. The EV will go on sale alongside rather than replacing its gas and diesel cousins. For some, it'll be the perfect fit. For others, a wait-and-see attitude may make more sense, and Ford will happily sell you an internal combustion F-150, or maybe the hybrid, while you ponder the path to full electrification. I think what makes the F-150 Lightning feel so successful is that combination of the familiar and the new. On the one hand, this is the F-150 that people love already. They know how it works, they know its capabilities, they know how convenient it can be to be a full-size truck owner. And then at the same time, you have all of the new features, the new things that electrification can bring and that only electrification can bring. Features like the ability to run a whole worksite or a campsite from the F-150 Lightning's battery, the ability to run your whole home in the case of an outage. And while I think it'll be things like torque and range and towing capacity which bring people into the dealerships to begin with, I reckon that when people live with an electric truck, when they see the things an electric truck can do that only an electric truck can do, that's going to be what makes the big shift. And that's why the F-150 Lightning feels like such a big deal. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Slash Gear videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.